If you've ever felt like you didn't fully understand why you said what you said, or you didn't say what you didn't say, or why you behaved the way you did when you did that thing that you did that you regret, this one's for you. Hey, beautiful human, it's me, Rebecca Wiener McGregor, and welcome to another episode of Effective Immediately, the show where we talk mindset, abundance, healthy emotions, leadership, and I give you a moment, a shift that you can use effective immediately to help your mindset. So here's the thing that seems like a secret, but it's not really a secret. You are living right now in the same body, the same space with every version of yourself that you have ever been. And every version of yourself that you will ever be. So think about this for a moment. Now, as I want you, as you explore this, remember, we're just looking at this with curiosity today. We're looking at it from a place of non-judgment, but I want you to think about how valuable it is to know this because every version of you that has ever existed is present right now. You wonder why you did a certain thing that you did, why you responded the way that you did. It is because a version of you that came before right now, a younger version of you most likely, who has been in a difficult situation, had a difficult moment, a difficult event, a series of difficult experiences, a period of time where there was difficulty, has shifted the way that you operate. And our subconscious mind, if we always remember, our subconscious mind is constantly looking to keep us safe, which means in the familiar and in the same. And what that really means is that it will go back in time to past experiences for every single thing that we are doing and look for something that feels, seems the same. Some experience that seems similar and then it will look at how you behaved emotionally, what happened in your physical responses, what your thoughts were, what your behaviors were, and it will take everything from that file and use it as a way to respond in the current moment. If you have never heard me talk about this before, even if you have, think about how big that is. Think about how important that is for you. We are operating over 90% of the way that we behave, the way that we think, the way that we respond is from our subconscious mind. And our subconscious mind is like a massive data bank. It is like a massive Netflix of every moment completely recorded of everything that we have ever done, whether we remember it or not. Whether we remember it or not, it is in the file. So every experience that we have, our subconscious mind is looking at the past for how to operate in the current moment, how to respond in the current moment. And the versions of you that have been you in the past from when you were a little baby, when you were a toddler, when you were a youngster, when you were a tween and a teen and everything since are all present. Sometimes we think, well, that was a really strange response. Why did I respond that way? Why did I do that thing? Why did I respond in this kind of immature way? That is because the version of you that had an experience that was close to the one that you just had was the anchoring place, was the root, was the reference point for that response for those experiences and those responses. So let's look at this another way. I'm going to make sure you can hear me over here. Okay. Let's look at this a different way. <clears throat> Imagine you get in a fight with someone. Maybe you get in a fight with your significant other. And in the past, your way has been to run and that every time anything got hard for you, you left the situation, you ran because when you were really little, 
it was easier for you to get away from a situation where there was arguing. Um, maybe you witnessed um, one of your parents or parental figures, and this is not judging them, this is not blaming them, but maybe you witnessed this behavior um, in the past where they got in a fight and one of them left. Have you ever heard of people experiencing something like this? Yes. Okay. So they got in a fight. One of them left. And the next time it happened, you had seen that behavior. Your subconscious mind had taken it in as a response of how to do things, how to be in this moment. And say, for example, then you decided that in a subconscious decision, the next time there was a fight that you were going to leave the situation because of that unconscious teaching, that unconscious lesson. Now forward a little bit where you are in a new relationship and you get in a fight and your first thought is, Oh my gosh, I've got to get the hell out of here. I've got to run. I've got to get away from this person. I've got to break up with this person. I've got to go. This is not good. The first time that there's any, um, confusion about the way the relationship is going to be the first inkling that someone might get hurt. You might have your feelings hurt from a disagreement or something like that. You run and you may think, wow, that's a really immature response. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I would just run in this situation. It doesn't even make sense for right now. I really trust this person. Our values seem aligned. It's just a simple disagreement. I know we can get past this. Why would I have the feeling like I needed to run? It's because you're not operating from the present moment. We're operating from the past. The subconscious mind is trying to keep us safe, trying to keep us in the familiar, trying to keep us moving along in a safe way. And by doing that, keeping us in the predictable, the safe is predict. The predictable is safe. The safe is the same, the similar. So when we learn things, it goes in that big net Netflix data bank I was talking about. And we're constantly referring to that as to how to respond in the current moment. And the easiest way to get through these things, of course, is to use hypnosis to reprogram your subconscious mind. And it's not me sitting behind a computer with uh, wires connected to your head, reprogramming your mind. It is you talking about those past experiences, allowing yourself to honor and validate the feelings of the experience, the emotions of the experience, the energy of the emotion of the experience, your physical response to the emotions and of the experience. And that helps to neutralize that experience. So thinking if you had a traumatic moment that your body keeps going to over and over and over again, it's like this thing about your worthiness was tested. And so you notice you just can't get to where you want to get in your business. You just can't break the ceiling to get to that next income level, to get to that next visibility level, level to allow yourself to have the success that you want or... There's just something there that won't let it be, that won't let you have the levels of success you want without tremendous hard work. This tells me that there is some experience that happened in your life that dented, messed with, scratched, scuffed up your worthiness. Now, this isn't wrong or bad. Because most people have this stuff, right? We're all operating off of these old experiences. We're all offering off, operating off of painful, difficult, sometimes very hard experiences where something happened to us. It caused pain. It caused fear. It caused anger, sadness. And we shifted the story about ourselves. We shifted the narrative about what is possible for us. We shifted a little bit about what we're allowed to have, what we deserve, what we're worthy of. And this is very, very common for women, especially because our worthiness is very, very, is 
probably the most common thing that is damaged when we are mistreated, when we are misunderstood. I'm going to say that again. Our worthiness and our deservingness is the first thing that gets damaged because we're trying so hard, especially beautiful Gen X and millennial, late, later millennials. We've tried so hard to take care of everybody, to take make sure everybody's happy, to be these super high achieving people. That when something happens to us, something that has happened in our subconscious mind, it's usually our worthiness that is dinged or damaged. Not broken. I don't see us as broken. Just that we've had experiences that's shifted the way that we see ourselves and the way that we see our world. So we have to work that much harder to be valuable, to be seen, to be understood, etc. So now all of these versions that you have inside of yourself are operating from, are operating together in this big Netflix catalog, right? So you have these versions of yourself that you have been when you were a very little girl, when you were um, a toddler, elementary school, tween and junior high, teenager, young adult, young woman, and even maybe starting um possibly motherhood or those kinds of things. Every version of you is still inside of you. So when we are working with all of these experiences that we've had, there are these versions of you that are holding on to old experiences as a way to keep you safe. So imagine the Netflix catalog of everything that you've ever been through in your life also has it's grouped by age, and that version of you that was that age is right there telling you how to operate. It's probably the simplest way to explain how this is happening. So the version of you that had the thing happen, that everything shifted, is the one who is going to be there holding on to that experience and reminding you that what you want to do, what you're in right now, isn't safe for whatever reason. And it will cause anxiety, it will cause anger, it will cause sadness, it will cause grief, it will cause self-sabotage, it will cause shame. Even if the current situation doesn't require those emotions exactly, because it was connected to something similar that a version of yourself went through, it will activate those feelings in you. And this is everybody. Everybody operates like this. So be very loving with yourself as you're thinking about this, but recognizing that the version of you that went through that thing, even the version of you that you were last week, when you responded the way that you did that one time that didn't quite make sense, that version of you still exists inside of you. Even if no one else can see it, that version of you exists still. In fact, it only exists to you because you're the only one who can still communicate with it, and recognize it. Now, the really cool part is that we can help that version of you that is holding on to the pain, the shame, the guilt, the blame, the anxiety, whatever, to release its hold on those experiences by healing the experiences themselves and then inviting that version of you that you were that is holding on so tightly into the present moment. Help that version of you recognize that that pain that moment, that experience, those collection of experiences are no longer happening and that they're safe here in 2024. So imagine that part of you that has been holding you back, <clears throat> that part of you that has questioned your worthiness or whether or not you could be as successful as you want and has been kind of holding you back, holding back your visibility, holding back you allowing yourself to identify as the successful person that you want to be, the next level of success you want to be, that we can help that part of you to release the tension, release the fear, release the worry of being unworthy 
or whatever level of unworthiness it might have and to allow you to actually identify as the version of yourself that already has what you want. This is so powerful, so important, and can cause rapid shifts in the way that you allow success into your life. However you define success, success by your definition. This is so exciting, isn't it? Because the parts of us that have remained stuck the parts of us that have been like stuck in that rut, trying to get through, doing, overthinking, overdoing, pushing, pushing, pushing. It's not about what's happening in the present moment that's keeping you from getting to where you want to go. It's some experience that your subconscious mind is holding on to, the version of yourself is holding on to, that is trying to keep you from hurting yourself trying to keep you from being in danger and being in danger also includes being rejected, being abandoned, whether emotionally or physically, being seen as um, someone who shines too brightly, being seen as someone is who is too successful or greedy or whatever else your mind might, the story your mind might be telling you. There are parts of you, versions of you, that have these beliefs and these stories. And as long as they are there, they will not allow you to move as quickly toward your goal as you want to. Now, let's, I'm going to clear up any old stories that you might have heard. You can have limiting beliefs about success and still be extremely successful. It might take a little longer. You might need a little bit more dedication, a little more perseverance. It might be a little harder, it might be a little bit more painful. But you can still have everything that you want. Everything that feels good and right and natural to you. You can have it. So I'm not saying, I'm not using any scare tactics that you have to go and heal these parts of your mind before you can be successful. I'm telling you that it'll make it easier. It'll make it more fun. And it'll make it swifter for you to get to the thing that you want that much faster. Okay. So are you ready for your effective immediately moment of the week? Okay, here it is. Anytime that you feel that your body, your mind is stopping you from having what you want. It is stopping you from being fully visible, stepping into the next version of yourself, allowing yourself to be as successful as you want, whatever the case may be. I want you to put your hand on your heart. I want you to ask all the versions of myself that have ever been and will ever be that are present right now. Be here with me and say the present date. This is wild. This is so effective in hypnosis and it is effective out of hypnosis as well. Put your hand on your heart. It'll ground you. Say the current date. And help the parts of you that are holding on to something in the past be present in this moment. Help them understand that they are not caught in that old experience. They're not caught in the past. They're not caught in the old story anymore. That that old story doesn't exist anymore. That they are safe here in 2024 or whenever. Okay? If you practice this, and be loving with yourself. It creates more flow. Being frustrated with yourself, being irritated with yourself, that is the part of you that will create more separation and more resistance. So don't really refrain from doing that, okay? Really refrain from being too mean to yourself. I like to say mean at all, but sometimes it just comes out automatically because of old programming. So try not to be mean to yourself, unkind to yourself. Try not to push unkind words or anything like that. Be really gentle and loving with yourself. It'll create more unity between the versions of yourself that you have been all right now and will be in the future. If you want to accelerate what is possible for you by releasing the limiting beliefs, by releasing the old experiences, the old trauma that has caused you pain and you continue to carry it in the form of sadness, depression, grief, um, anxiety, anger, then I have something for you. 
I've opened up three additional spaces in my one-on-one -on -one program, Elevated Leader, where I help you to release the old stories, the old programs, very, very quickly. So you can have the life that you want, feel the way that you want, without fighting your emotions all the time, without the exhaustion of trying to keep yourself on track and making it automatic and fun for you to have the abundant life that you want. Rich in friendship, rich in trust, rich in joy, and rich in financial abundance, and so much more. If you would like to learn more about that, you can find me at RebeccaWiener.com. You can click the schedule button and set up a call with me, or you can send me a DM wherever you see this message. So practice being so loving with yourself, so caring to all the versions of yourself that you have been and will ever be, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.